Good morning, everyone. Welcome to North Idaho. We are dealing with some really strange weather, very unseasonably warm weather. It was 60 degrees yesterday. It's 50 today. I was hoping to be able to share my winter wonderland with you all, but that's not going to happen today. <laughs> Maybe later this week we're supposed to get snow. But welcome. I wanted to share with you guys one of the greatest questions and comments I get on my materials is, I wish I had faith like you, or I wish I had faith like she does. Well, I don't want you guys to feel like you can't have what I have. So I'm going to share with you how I found this place and how I get very nurtured in this place. And it's, it's accessible to everybody. Especially now, you know, last week um, we spoke about how to handle hard times. Part of being able to handle and to cope through hard times is having very strong faith. How do you get strong faith? It's a really good question. And, you know, I was talking with my son about this this morning and you know, I asked him if he ever struggles with it. And he said, and this was his very insightful answer for a 25-year-old. He goes, well, of course I do. It's human nature. So if you're struggling with your faith and, and your trust in God, especially now through all these hard times and the uncertainty, don't show yourself grace. Show yourself grace because we all slip up. We all question things. We all question our faith. We question, we just, we hit a place of fear and worry. But as you build your faith muscles, you will find an amazing place, an amazing place where you are starting to create a habit that when hard times come, you're not as quickly broken and you don't waver. What What is faith? I want to read a couple passages to you guys today. These are some things that just resonate greatly with me. Um, and let's just talk about what faith is. You know, the greatest tool we have in our toolbox is our Bibles. Guys, this says it all. Right here, this says it all. And if we meditate on its truths, so much power is found there. I want to encourage you, um, when this is finished, I will add a description to it. And in there, you will find a bunch of links. One of those links is to my Spotify playlist. It's my Relentlessly Faithful playlist. And there's a song called Promise. I want you to listen to that song and to the words of that song. Part of Building our faith is understanding his true faithfulness to us. You know, look at the Israelites. They were blessed with water. They were blessed with food. They were blessed with a pathway through the sea. Yet they still wavered in their faith. And part of that is because they lost sight of that. If we keep our focus on his faithfulness and understand his faithfulness, understand that when we go through a hard time, that's not his lack of faithfulness. That's his building our perseverance. He doesn't create the hard things we walk through. He promises to walk through them with us and to be faithful to us and to bring us to the other side of that. Through that process, we build perseverance. We build faith muscles. We grow, we become better individuals, less of me, more of him. It's perspective. It's perspective in our life of how we see things. You know, most people go through a hard time and, and they totally disengage from God because they feel God's not present, but it couldn't be more the opposite. So what is faith? Faith is Hebrews 11.1. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. All of this for me is, is just so enlightening, so empowering, so powerful to me to know that I can't see him, but I know in here that he is present. He is with me. 
I hear his still small voice. I see his miracles. I see his hand in everything that I walk out and the things my family walks out, the things our community walks out, the answered prayers. You know, it's just, it's such an amazing place to be. How do you hear that still small voice? I wondered that 12 years ago. I wanted to have strong faith. I wanted to know what my purpose was. I wanted a relationship. I wanted that still small voice. I had no idea how to attain it. Over the last seven years with my illness and my healing, I pulled in. I pulled in really tight. I pulled in really hard. I pulled in very faithfully. I pulled in very steadfast. I created a habit. In that habit and out of that place, amazing things grew. That's all. That's the secret, guys. Pull in. Pull into him because the deeper you go, the more powerful the place and the relationship becomes. So if you like what I've got, pull into him. Read his word, meditate on his word. Um, just, I'm sharing this not out of a plug, but out of the benefit that I gained. This is my new Relentlessly Faithful Gratitude and Prayer Journal. I created this out of a divine nudge. I wanted a place where I could go that I had enough pages for my year to journal. I wanted a place where I could write the words that meditate or that, that resonate with me so I could meditate on them. So this is a 471 page journal. It's got 14 pages for your Bible verses. It's got 14 pages for your goals, plans, dreams, and desires. It's got 366 pages for your journaling plus 14 extra pages. I included a leap year and there's 52 extra pages at the back of the book for your weekly to do's or your weekly prayer list. I use it as my prayer list. I'm sharing this because when we write things down, it becomes more concrete. When we write our Bible verses down that really resonate with us and we meditate on them and we read them, I mean, I, I always have written them down, but they weren't in front of me like this. They were in Evernote or they were highlighted on my Bible app. By doing that and by meditating and really reading over the Bible verses that resonate with me, and I believe, truly believe, that everything happens for a reason and there is great purpose in everything that happens to us and through us. <laughs> so I think it's important that when these Bible verses are resonating with us, that we write them down and at worst, highlight them. If you're not familiar with Bible.com, you can access it on the internet, on, on a browser. You can access it on your phones, on an app. You can access multiple versions of the Bible. I, as far as I understand, every version that's available is on the app. If you don't understand the King James Version, I love the King James Version because it is traditional and authentic, but I will be the first to admit that these, the thous, the those, it messes with my head. I lose the translation. I lose what I'm reading in the King James Version. So I use the NIV, the NLT, the HCSB. Um, there's different, and the message, sometimes I read that just for kicks and giggles, because that could not be a more modern day down to earth version of dude, this is the Bible. So check out Bible.com if you struggle reading the word, because there is great power. This word is alive. It, it carries us through all this time. His miracles that he worked in the day are still happening today. So don't disregard that. So faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. You know, we cannot see him, but we can see what he's doing. And if we focus on the gratitude in our lives also, that really helps to um, bring it home, guys. Um, as I say in my journal, you start your day off with three things you're grateful for. You end your day with three things things you're grateful for, and you've bookended your day. You will start your day looking at the good. You will end your day looking at the good. Sure, bad stuff happens. It happens to us all. Right now, life is so unpredictable. 
but I want to share something with you. Life today is no more unpredictable than it was three years ago. We just feel like it is. You know, nothing is promised. Today is a gift. It's all perspective. It's how we look at things. You live your life to the fullest today because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, regardless if we're going through a pandemic or not. We don't know. We don't, we have no clue. So you live your day out in full faith and, and don't hold back fear, worry, all those things that live outside of faith, joy, hope pull us away from the best parts of life. So let's go on here in his word because it's really important. Um, I want to also read to you um, Hebrews 11.3. By faith, we understand that the entire universe was formed at God's command, that what we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. And I do want to jump back because Hebrews 12.2 gotta find it here real quick bear with me here we go okay so it says now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see two says this is what and the ancients were commended for they were commended for their faith. And guys, right now more than ever, we need to be faithful. We need to be that light. Um, we need to be willing to be strong in our faith so that others come to him. And I just think that's so important. I, you know, I'm in a really good place because I no longer experience fear and worry. That is a result of creating a habit. You know, when I first hit this place, I thought that I was just numb. I thought that I no longer had feelings where I've come to find that it's not that at all. I have feelings. I just don't have to worry anymore because my faith has grown so strong. It's an amazing place to be. You know, when the bad things happen, it's like an instant turn. God's got a plan. It wasn't meant to be. He's got something better for me. You know, I, I never, it's never a negative thought that comes. So I want you guys to keep building your faith muscles because the more you build your faith muscles and the more you focus on your faith, the gratitude in your life, your perspective, make your perspective positive, you will create the habit that will be so steadfast, it's automatic, that when scary stuff and awful stuff happens, you can sit and praise him. That's why I want you to listen to the words to the song Promise. Uh, it is just incredibly powerful. We need to praise him in the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there is great growth and strength there. So let's go on. Um, Mark 40 uh, 30 through 32. Jesus said, how can I describe the kingdom of God? What story should I use to illustrate it? It is like a mustard seed planted in the ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of all garden plants. It grows long branches and birds can make nests in its shade. Why do I read that? Because it goes on to say in Matthew seventeen twenty, you don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Faith of a mustard seed, as it says, is the smallest seed that just continues to grow and flourish and become extremely strong. Start your faith out like a mustard seed. And as you continue to grow in your faith, you will be planting those same seeds and growing other people's faith. That is my prayer right here today. And I give God all the glory, less of me, more of him, because 
we have such great abilities within ourselves. And when our faith is strong, we can move mountains because he says we can. And this is where I want to jump into James 1, 6 through 8. This is really important, guys. Pay attention to this. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. So in other words, if you are trying to move that mountain, but you, your faith is not unshakable, you won't be able to move that mountain. But if your faith is strong and steadfast, and the more you focus on him and the more you focus on your faith, the stronger it will become that you do hit a place where you can move mountains. God gives us the supernatural. We just need to add and make an effort and keep seeking him. I hope this is all making sense to you guys. Give me some love if this is resonating with you today because I really I really feel that one of the greatest tools in our toolbox is building our faith muscles and reading his word. I mean, in order to build your faith muscles, you need to stay in the word. So this is also really important and gives a good analogy of, of how things are. This is Mark ten fifteen. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. You know, faith like a child. Children see things for what it is. And they, they you know, we as adults outgrow that, unfortunately. And we have to retrain those faith muscles because we start to question things. We see the world. We... We are, the enemy, the enemy seeps in. Children have a solid faith and, and we need to hang on to that. That's why we need to have faith like a child. We need to have faith the size of a mustard seed. It all starts small, guys. It all starts small. But as you keep staying in it and focusing on it, that's when God does amazing things. And you hit an amazing place. So here's another one for you, a little bit of an empowerment. Um, Isaiah 40, 31. Many of you know this. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. You know, our new strength has to come daily in seeking him. You know, create I hate to use this word, but a ritual, a habit. It's it's a it's a good habit. You know, there's so many habits in our world that are not good for us, but start a habit every morning of starting your day with God. I do it every day and I don't waver on my time. You know, so many people are afraid to give up 15 minutes of their busy schedule because they just don't have the time. You have to have the time. This is where it's at, guys. This is where it's all it all comes from. This is the foundation. So you need to seek him and you need to seek him first. That's also part of the struggle is that we only in our society, we only seek him when we have time or we only seek him in the little bit of time we give him. And, and we don't really pull in. When you pull in, I'm telling you guys, that's where it's at. That is totally where it's at. Psalms 37, 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. I promise you. I promise you guys. You make these efforts to pull in, to make these positive habits in your life. You will see such amazing things happening and transitioning and, you know, if you question whether he's there, you know, there's bad things that happen in our world. How could there possibly be a God? God isn't responsible for the bad things. If you're feeling negative things, you're experiencing bad things, that is not God. That is the enemy. The enemy is of this world. And he is trying to get a foothold wherever he can. He will use such maniacal tactics to get into your life. You feel negative, 
you flick it off and tell it to get lost because that is not God. And then you pull God in and ask him to fill you up. That's the ticket. Romans 15, 13. This is my prayer for you guys today. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Those are amazing words. When this goes onto my Instagram page where it will stay and IGTV, you will have references to all of the Bible verses I read today. I encourage you, write them down, meditate on them, understand that our faith is built through our relationship with him and continuing to build those faith muscles. He is faithful. And when we focus on how faithful he is, that adds reassurance to our faith. He doesn't ever let us down. He doesn't ever leave us. He will not forsake us. We need to have strong faith. The more we build those faith muscles, the stronger we are and the stronger we are at combating the enemy, being unaffected by the negative things that happen in our life, by our surroundings. The other key thing that just popped in my head that's really important is pay attention to who you surround yourself with. You know, if you are surrounding yourself with a negative Ned or a negative Nelly, they're going to very quickly pull you down. We need to surround ourselves with positive people that encourage us, inspire us, lift us, grow us. It's so important. And and now more than ever, you know, we need community. We need fellowship, not just with God, but with other believers. If you don't have that place in your local surroundings, and even if you do, I want to encourage you to join my community. I pulled away from social media I just, it's, it's time consuming. It wraps us up into the wrong things and there's a lot of evil in it. And I just didn't have time for that in my life. I want my life to be full of wholesomeness, goodness, um, things that, that wow me and that don't drain me. Okay. So you can go to treyourwilderness.com slash community and join us there. We have such an amazing community and God is so actively at work. And you will not find a more loving community. I give God all the glory to see what is happening in our community. It is amazing. You can come there. You know, my family and I share our faith-led preparedness, homesteading, off-grid, wilderness survival type lifestyle with the world. But as you noticed, faith is first. And that is one of the most important things is that we need to keep him leading the way in the forefront and seek him all the time. But you can come to our community and you can learn about homesteading, off-grid living, the preparedness, the wilderness survival. You can ask your questions. No question is stupid. That's how you learn. You need to ask, ask, ask. Come to our community. Ask your questions. If you've got prayer requests, list them. We want to be there for one another. And over the last two years, we have grown in such a great way. And we have been there for one another in a time when we really need each other. So come join us. And I want you guys to build your perseverance. It is so, so important. You know, I read this last week, these verses just, you know how you find the bumper stickers or the quotes that just totally empower you? What I've read to you today are the things that empower me. And I read this last week. I'm going to read it again. This is like my warrior up kind of words. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. It will be given to you. This right here, guys, is how you build those faith muscles. Perseverance. You just keep digging in. You know, life's going to throw you stuff always, always. So you just got to keep digging in. I like those verses in James as James 2 through 5 They're just powerful to me. Uh, I see people on here that have walked out similar journeys as I have. Um, And 
through that journey is where we grow. There's power that comes from that. And that power carries us through to the next event that comes in our lives. You know, I don't like to say that I love um, the struggles, but I love walking into the struggles knowing right well that God is going to walk me through that that there is purpose in it, that there is growth in it, that there is amazingness on the other side. It's no different than jumping out of our comfort zone. If, you are, if you're somebody that jumps out of your comfort zone regularly, you know that life is awesome because on the other side, there's so much more. And it's just like with our faith. If we stay in a stagnant place and we aren't building our faith muscles, we aren't growing and we need to grow. And part of growing is growing in him. It's growing ourselves. Like I said, less of me, more of him. But that is the ticket to living life and having faith like I do, is just constantly seeking him, constantly creating those habits. I want to see all of you following behind me. This is something that just popped in my head that I think is really important to put out there too. You know, comparison, the comparison game is not good in any realm, business, uh, personal, nor faith. We should never be comparing ourselves to other people. We should be comparing ourselves to who we were the day before. We should always be living life wanting to be 1% better than we were the day before. So if you're wanting to build your faith, don't compare your faith to mine. My walk is different. My growth has been different because of so many factors. Um, my, my determination to grab hold of it, uh, the things I've walked out. You know, we can't say that we've, we've walked in anyone else's shoes. We just can't. We grow differently. We mature differently. But know that you can have what I have. So don't compare in a negative way or, or, or feel poorly because you don't have the faith I do, know that you can attain it and know that you can have it and know that you every day are a step closer to having that faith and that strong faith because you are seeking him. It's a personal growth thing. So don't compare and focus on the verses I've shared today and just continue building that relationship. Give up 15 minutes to a half an hour of your social media time throughout the day. And I promise you, your life and your faith will grow in leaps and bounds. Start your day with him. End your day with him. And I, he'll be in the middle. Uh, when bad things happen, don't blame him. Know that he's there. Know that when we are weak, he is strong. Know that through our weakness, he will bring beauty from the ashes and know that the negative things that we're experiencing have, are, are not from him. But he will grow us through them and to the other side. And, like I said, join my community because we'll be there to walk you through whatever it is you're walking out. I've been very blessed to have good, faithful Christian people in my life. That's another reason my faith is so strong. Because there are people that I've always watched and I've wanted to be or have what they had. Keep seeking him, keep pulling in, and keep surrounding yourself with good people. And join me every Monday for the Monday Inspiration. I'm determined to be on here and to continue to lead you and help you as we walk out these crazy times. But know you are loved, and I want to just end with a prayer. Papa, I just thank you for this time. I love you. I love how you work in our lives. I love what you are doing in our lives and in our world. You know, most people can't see your hand in our world, but I know that in the background you are working a million times and doing a million things all at once to help and to regain our country and to inspire those that are going to do it. Papa, I just thank you for this time. I hope that you used me and my words today, that I've reached someone and that they are able to benefit from what I just shared. And more importantly, that they are able to benefit from your word that was spoken. Papa, I just, I love you and I thank you for what you're going to do here today. I thank you for putting your hedge of protection over these people that joined me today. Everyone has a story. Everyone is walking out something different. Be there for them in their time of need. Be there for them how they need you. 
Let them see your presence. Let them see your hand. Let them get a glimpse so that they continue to build their faith muscles. And just thank you for what you're going to do, not only in my life and my family's life, but in whoever's watching, in our community, in our world. Be with our leaders. Use their evil tactics for your good. Bring out the evil and replace it with the good, Papa. And just thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you for the abundance. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for your faithfulness. We love you and ask all of this in your holy and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Guys, I love you all. I wish you a fabulous rest of your day and rest of your week. And I will see you next Monday on here. I'm playing around with the times to see what works best in the new year. I will set a time, a, a solid time that we will do this. But every Monday, look for me to go live. I love you guys. God bless.